Hello everyone, this is Dipali and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be talking about adding custom fields of data type, foundation objects and generic objects. If you happen to be new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Let's get started. I will add the custom field in the employee time object. We will go to the employee time object from configure object definitions. I will search the object definition employee time. Take action, make correction so that it goes to the edit mode. And here I will add two custom fields. One, a location field, which is my foundation object. In the details section, I will provide the label and the translations as well. And in order to have all the locations in the system populated, I have to give a valid value source. This valid value source is the code of the object definition of the location. Since location is a foundation object, you can find these codes in the data models. To access the data model, you should have access to provisioning. If you do not have access to provisioning for location, I can tell that it is in most of the cases, it is location with a small L. The valid value source is case sensitive. You need to be careful of what characters you are typing in. A location with a capital L will not work. I have given location as valid value source. And I click on finish. So I've added one field location with data type foundation object. I'll add another field with data type generic object and I call it as legal entity. In the details, I will provide the label and the translations and now I need to find out the valid value source or provide the valid value source for legal entity. I'll just see how is legal entity actually configured in the system. Since legal entity can be accessed or the definition of this object legal entity can be accessed from configure object definition and we do not need to have access for provisioning to check the object definition, I'll go to the object definition of legal entity and just see what is the code here. So the code that is being mentioned is legal entity without space and with a capital L and a capital E. So I will provide that code here. This would help the system to identify the object from which it has to pull the values. If I give the legal entity with a small l and a small e, it will not work. It will even not allow me to save this particular object. So I can see that my employee time object where I have added two custom fields with data type foundation object and the generic object is saved successfully. Now I'll go to my test employee and see how these two fields gets populated in his absence record. I'll go to leave in attendance, administer time, or maybe let me just edit the already existing record. If I come down, I can see that these are the two fields that are added in the system. And if I go here, if I see this, these are all the locations which are present in the system. So this particular field will populate all the location which are available in the system. And similarly, the legal entity will help populate all the legal entities. 
Let me also show you quickly how we can make any particular field mandatory and read only. In the object definition, if you just go to take action, make correction and say go to the date field which we created previously. So here we have required as no. If I click on or if I select required as yes, I will get this red asterisk on the UI because it is marked as required field. And in order to change the visibility to read only, I can select read only here. Not visible will hide the field from the UI. So I will select read only and I'll just finish and then save. And then I'll show you how these two changes would look like on the UI. So I'll go to the UI. I try to edit the same record. Here I'll see that it is a mandatory field and it is blank. It is blank because there is a rule on change of this particular field which will default this field to the value of today plus one. But since it is read only, I cannot enter any value here. So if I try to create a new absence here and try to submit a new absence, say for 6th of April of just 10 minutes and I click on submit. I should get the error message that this is a required field association in this object. Since it is required and I cannot edit it, so I won't be able to submit any absence record. So I'll go to the object definition and remove this field as read only and make it editable so that I can edit or add the value of this particular field from the UI and which allows my rule to trigger and eventually allows me to save this record the absence record. So this is saved successfully, the object definition. I'll now go here and try to create a new absence. So here this is marked as mandatory. I'll just give any date, it'll take tomorrow's date, which is how it is created. Give the date as 6th of April and just request an absence of just for 10 minutes as an example. So this is successfully created. So now you have seen that how we can add custom fields of data type foundation objects and generic objects and also how we can make a field mandatory and change the visibility of a field. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was helpful for you. Maybe you can check my other videos. Do comments in the comment section if you're looking for any specific topics in the employee central area. See you soon in my next video. Thank you. Bye for now.